if you're just getting started with Excel VBA, the Excel VBA editor is where it's going down. Let's get into it. Our first task is to access the VBA editor. Where do we find it? Well, just go ahead on your system, open a new Excel file, then go to file in the top left-hand corner, down to options in the bottom left-hand corner. Then we have our options window, go to customize ribbon. Then over on the right-hand side, we've got to make sure the developer box is ticked. Go ahead and tick that and then hit okay. Then we can see at the top of the screen, the developer tab is now visible. It's like we've become computer programmers. The developer tab is visible. Hit the developer tab and then over on the left, Visual Basic, and this is it. Welcome to the Visual Basic. But if that feels like a lot of clicking around, clicking into the developer tab, you can do it using a Windows shortcut on the Windows PC. Try Alt F11, hold down the Alt key, hit F11. That's going to open and close the VBA editor. So what's our basic setup in the VBA editor and how do we restore it if it all goes wrong and we lose it? So let's get into it quickly. This is our kind of default view. In the top left hand corner, we've got the Project Explorer here. In the bottom left, we've got the Properties window, both really useful. Now, sometimes you will lose these inadvertently. I did it lots of the start. I had a view like this. It was like a disaster. How do I get these back? Don't panic, just go up to the view menu at the top, hit Project Explorer, view menu again, hit properties window. So this is our kind of default view. We can adjust the size of these windows here. This is our default view. If you lose this view, go to the view menu. You'll be able to restore it there. Let's have a closer look at the Project Explorer. Now it's up in the top left corner here and here Excel displays useful objects. So an object could be a file, could be a sheet or it could be a module and a module is a place where code lives. So we're going to need one. Let's go ahead and create a module now. Just go to insert at the top and then module and we can see we have a module appearing on the screen. So these are the important objects. This is where the code lives. The Project Explorer organizes them for us. It's fairly simple at the moment because we only have one file open. If you have multiple files open, the Project Explorer can be much busier than this, but we'll come back to that a bit later. So when might you need the properties window? Down in the bottom left hand corner here of the VBA editor. Well, we've just created a module, which is an object. And say we want to change the name of the module. That's a common thing you might want to do. Now, the name of the module is a property. Properties are things about worksheets, work workbooks, objects in Excel that we might want to change. For example, the name of something. We can look at the workbook here. We've got lots of properties. We can look at the sheets here. We've got lots of properties here too. Let's go back to the module and let's change a property in the properties window. Nice and easy with a the module. There's only one property we can change, which is the name. Let's change it to something more meaningful. Let's just say our code. Now in real practice, you want to use informative names for your modules. For example, I'll have a module that has all my navigation code in and call it something like Navi. But this is how the properties window can help us. Now we've got our basic setup. We're ready to do some coding. So what I want you to do is to go ahead and download the download file that comes with this video, open it, and if you get a notification, say enable macros, if you manage to do that, this should be the view you get in the VBA editor. You can see it's much more complicated. Now we've got two files open, but this is a good challenge for us. Can we navigate the Project Explorer to get the code from the download file into our new file? Now to do that, notice right at the top, the name of the files. We've got the download file here, and then this file name, is that new file I created right at the beginning of the video. I haven't saved it yet. So it's just called book one. So we want to transfer some code from the download file, go into this module and then copy paste this code across. So from option explicit all the way down to end, select the code, hit control C, and then we've got to go to the module we created. We're going to go to the our code module, double click there and then control V and we've successfully copy pasted the code into our file. So congratulations, you've completed a task, 
using the Project Explorer, and that's gonna mean we can get started with coding now. So now close the download file, continue with your original file. I'll see you in the next step. So now it's time to run a macro, which is a little computer program using the VBA editor. And it's looking good. I've closed the download file. So now the Project Explorer looks less busy. That's gonna help keep our stress levels down. I always recommend only having one file open at a time when you're using VBA. So this is looking good. We're ready to run this code. I wanna find out what it does. Perhaps you do too. So I'm gonna go ahead in the main coding window. I just want you to click in there so you can see the cursor flashing in the main coding window. Then we're gonna go ahead and at the top, hit the play button, the green play button. You can see when I hover the pointer over it, it says run sub. That's gonna execute our macro and we're gonna see what happens here. So I'm gonna just click play now and we can see we've actually got an error message. Now, that's all part of the series because we're gonna debug this, we're gonna fix it, understand what's gone wrong. Also notice in the spreadsheet, we have just some, we have some values appearing in cells there. So we're gonna look at how to use the VBA editor to fix this macro. Just a quick one, guys, I'm in the video edit now. If you like this video, if you like Tiger content, I do a daily video on Facebook and Instagram under the hashtag your daily tiger. I'll see you over there. Let's get back into it. So we have managed to create a VBA error, but don't worry, it's all part of the plan. And as you go through your career, you're gonna create lots of errors in VBA. But before we try to debug that, let's look at a different way to trigger a macro, a really useful feature here. Go to tools at the top and then macros, and then all of the macros in the file will be listed here. And we can run macros from this box as well. So I've selected debug this, this is the name of our macro. I'm gonna hit run and we've got the same result there, not to worry. In the next step, we're gonna look at how to fix this, but you can also trigger macros using tools and macros, see all the macros listed in the file there. So we've encountered our error, how do we start debugging it? Well, from this error message, I want you to hit debug. Now you'll notice that one of the lines of code is now yellow. We have a yellow line in there. That shows us that the VBA editor is in break mode. Now break mode is like the debug mode for VBA to help us solve problems. But in break mode, there is some unusual behavior. So we've got to realize that we are in break mode. One way to tell is we have this yellow line. Another way to tell is at the top of the VBA editor, we can see it says break next to the file name right at the top of the VBA editor. So this shows us we're in break mode. Break mode is gonna help us to debug this code. If you do need to get out of break mode quickly, you can reset the VBA editor. You can do that quickly by hitting the, the blue square, the stop button at the top of the VBA editor. I'm gonna go ahead and hit it now. I'm not in break mode anymore. You can see the yellow line has disappeared. It doesn't say break at the top of the VBA editor anymore. So we've got the reset button, the blue square at the top of the VBA editor. Now let's look at some of the VBA editor's awesome debugging tools. And this one is my personal favorite. We're gonna to go to the top. First, click in the routine. Make sure your cursor is in the routine. Then we're gonna to go to debug at the top of the VBA editor and step into. Then just left click on step into. We can see we've got the yellow line coming up so we know we're in break mode. Now, if you're on the Windows PC, I want you to just hit the F8 key and just see how the yellow line moves up and down. That's because Excel is working through the code. Alternatively, you can go to debug and step into, debug and step into. You can do that as many times as you need to. That means Excel is gonna execute the next line of code. But this really is the key to understanding VBA and particularly debugging. To be able to see the VBA editor and the Excel window at the same time as we are now, and then use the F8 key on the Windows PC to work through the code see what's going on step by step. This is a great debugging tool. So we've learned how to step through the code. We can go to debug at the top and then step through, or we can just hit the F8 key on the Windows PC. But even stepping through can take a long time. You can see I'm having to hit the keyboard a lot here. So it would be good to say to the VBA editor, can you run the code to a certain point? Run the code to a certain point. Now we can do that using a breakpoint, a breakpoint. I'm gonna go ahead, 
put a breakpoint here. I've just got my cursor in the gray margin. Gonna left click there. I can see a red circle has appeared. One of the lines is highlighted. That shows us we've got a breakpoint. So we can now go ahead, run the code. It's gonna stop at that breakpoint. That allows us to understand what's going on. That's gonna help us with debugging. So I'm gonna hit the run button, the green arrow at the top now, you can see the code has stopped at the breakpoint, another awesome debugging tool. Now we've got our breakpoint in, let's try to fix the code. So I've just hit the reset button, I'm gonna hit the play button now, we're gonna to run to the breakpoint. At this point, we wanna understand what is actually going on here. So I've got to the breakpoint, I'm gonna hit the F8 key, or you can just go debug, debug and step into. I'm gonna hit the F8 key and then I'm watching the Excel window at the same time to understand what is going on here. Also bear in mind, we're trying to build a T-shape. That's what the code will do. It will build a T-shape for us. Hitting the F8 key, I can see an O has appeared in cell B3. Hitting the F8 key again, an O has appeared in cell A3. So I can see we're going in that direction. Are we gonna go off the spreadsheet? Is that what's gonna happen? And we now have our error message. This is runtime error 1004, which means we've tried to reference something that the VBA editor thinks does not exist. And that kind of makes sense because we're trying to go to a column that is to the left of column A and such a column to Excel does not exist. So you can see by using the breakpoint and stepping through the code, we've been able to identify exactly what is wrong. So I want you to think, stop the video, you know, even if you don't have a lot of coding experience, stop the video, try to solve this yourself. How could we fix the code? I'm gonna to go to debug here. I can see the problematic line of code. And what I'm gonna do is just substitute the D for an F and just see if that makes a difference for us. So I'm gonna stop the code again, uh, run the code to our breakpoint. I'm gonna hit the F5 key this time. The F5 key will run the code. So rather than hitting the green arrow at the, at the top and we've got, okay, that's fine so far to this breakpoint. And then I'm gonna hit the F8 key now and we can see those O's are starting in the right place now. And we're gonna to get to column A and everything seems to have completed okay. We can tell that there wasn't a problem with this code because we've got to the last line of the routine, which is end sub, end sub, and we haven't had any error messages. So that's how to use the debugging tools in the VBA editor to fix code. Now we've managed to fix our code, but there's plenty more features in the VBA editor. And let's talk briefly about variables. So don't worry if you don't know what a variable is. A variable is just a place to store some information in the VBA editor. It can be difficult to understand what value is in a variable because we wanna change those values. That allows us to get stuff done in Excel. So if just hit the F8 key again, step through the code, and then I want you to hover the cursor over one of the variables. I'm hovering it over the counter variable. I can see the value of the variable. I'm gonna keep hitting the F8 key. I can see how the value of the variable is changing. In this case, it's gonna increment up until it gets to 10. So just hovering the cursor over a variable allows us to see what value is stored in the variable. That allows us to understand what variables are doing. Now, if you need a deeper understanding of what a variable is doing, I recommend the watch window. So how do we get to see the watch window? We go to view again, and then we're gonna hit watch window. We've got this additional window at the bottom. We're gonna right click and go to add watch, add watch. Then we're gonna type in the name of the variable that we want to watch and just hit okay, the name of our variable is counter, hit okay, I can now see counter at the bottom here. So again, I'm gonna step through the code using the F8 key and I can see the value of the variable changing in the watch window. So the watch window, another useful feature for understanding variables, understanding what the code is doing. Now, a lot of terms in Excel VBA can seem strange, particularly if you're a first time user. And what about this term option explicit? Right at the top of the module, what does that mean? Well, it's good practice to write this at the top of every module whenever you're doing VBA coding. It says to VBA, check the variables for spelling mistakes 
and do that before you execute any code. And it, and it doesn't sound particularly useful, but it's super useful because if there's a spelling mistake, the code might not work and it can be very, very difficult for us to spot. So by using option explicit, we're telling Excel to check all of the spelling of the variables. That's gonna save you a lot of time with your coding. I recommend using option explicit at the top of a module in the VBA editor. Now, if you don't wanna type option explicit every time, we can set up the VBA editor so that it appears automatically. And I do recommend this. To do this, we're gonna to go to tools at the top and then to options. We've got some really interesting options here. For example, you can change the formats. You can change how the code appears in the VBA editor. That might be useful for you. Uh, we're just gonna to go to here, back to editor, the editor tab here, and then go to require variable declaration. Make sure that's ticked. Now, just to show you what happens here, I'm gonna insert another module. So insert a module, and we can see at the top of the module, ready for us there, option explicit is already typed in. I recommend you do this in the VBA editor. Find and replace is gonna save so much time in your VBA career. It's a great way to quickly change code and save you a lot of manual typing work. So we can go to edit at the top, and then we're gonna to go to replace. And let's suppose we want to change the name of our counter variable. So counter is what we wanna change. I'm gonna tab down and let's replace it with Chris counter, a little bit more specific. And then we just hit replace all and Excel is gonna tell us how many replacements were made. Now, doesn't seem particularly impressive for our routine because we haven't got a huge amount of code here, but when you've got a long routine, you are gonna love find and replace one of the really useful features in the VBA editor. Thanks for watching this video. If you got value out of the video, you are gonna love our Excel VBA for beginners playlist. I'll see you over there. There's 50 or more videos with me, download files. You are gonna love it. Link in the description below. I'll see you there.